Ever wondered about the life and career of the legendary Tito Sato? What do you know about Tito Sato beyond his role in entertainment and politics? How did he transition from the world of entertainment to the world of politics? From his early days as a performer to his influential role in the Philippine Senate, he has been at the forefront of significant legislative initiatives, championing causes that impact the lives of every Filipino citizen. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at the life and career of Tito Sato, exploring the milestones that have shaped him into the influential figure he is today. Get ready for a roller coaster ride through the highs and lows, the laughter and the serious moments as we unravel the story of Tito Sato. Join us as we uncover the untold stories and fascinating facts about this multi-talented personality. Born on August 24, 1948, in Manila, Tito Soto hails from the illustrious Soto Showbiz clan. His full name is Vicente Castelo Soto ITI, a Filipino politician, entertainer and athlete. His parents were Marcelino Antonio Ojeda Soto Sari, 1916-1999, and Dr. Herminia Castelo Soto. Growing up in a family deeply rooted in the entertainment industry, Tito Soto was destined to make his mark in the limelight. Sato's paternal grandfather and namesake was former Senator Vicente Sato 1877-1950, the main author of the Press Freedom Law. Sato studied at Colegio de San Juan de Latron in Intramuros, Manila for his elementary, high school, and college education, earning a Bachelor of Arts degree majoring in English. His journey in the entertainment industry began in the 1970s when he joined the iconic musical group VST Company where he made a name for himself as part of the iconic trio Tito, Vic, and Joey. This trio, also known as TVJ, became a household name and laid the foundation for Tito Soto's enduring legacy in the Philippine entertainment industry. His talents weren't limited to singing. Tito Soto was also a skilled comedian and television host earning him a permanent spot in the hearts of Filipino audiences. The trio conquered various platforms, from television to movies, and became synonymous with laughter in the hearts of Filipinos. Some of their most memorable works include the long-running noontime show Eat Bulaga and blockbuster comedy films that continue to be beloved classics. Some of the movies he starred were Ice Bukol, Freshman in 1980, Azo Pusa in 1989, and Ian Tang Cabiso Threes in 2006. Many know Tito Satoa as a seasoned politician, but how did he make the transition from showbiz to politics? Sato was vice mayor of Quezon City from 1988 to 1992. He founded the Vice Mayor's League of the Philippines and served as its first president. During this period, Sato was also named vice chairman of Citizens Drug Watch. Sato was elected to the Senate of the Philippines in the 1992 senatorial election, topping the tally with nearly 12 million votes, more than 3 million more than his second place ranker with his first two terms in Senate. This made him the third member of his family to enter the Senate, after his grandfather Vicente Sato and granduncle Philemon Sato. In the 1998 senatorial election, Sato earned another term in the Senate with a third-place finish. Sato was appointed by President Gloria Macapagla Arroyo as a member of the Board of Directors and Acting Chairman of the Dangerous Drugs Board on July 4, 2008, succeeding Anselmo Avenido, whose term was expiring that day. The appointment was just over one year after his failed 2007 senatorial bid. Philippine election laws forbid defeated candidates from being appointed to government posts within a year of the election, serving until November 2009. In late 2009, he resigned as chair of the Dangerous Drugs Board to file his certificate of candidacy as senator, seeking a comeback to the Senate. Sato won a seat and placed ninth among 12 winning candidates with roughly 12 million votes, giving him his third non-consecutive term in the upper house. He was elected by the majority of his fellow senators as the majority leader of the Senate as well as the chairman of its Committee on Rules of the 15th Congress. Also, he was one of the 20 senators that voted to convict Chief Justice Renato Corona and to remove him from office on May 29, 2010. He continued on with his political career in the 16th Congress as part of the new Senate Minority Group. He was chosen by his colleagues to be the deputy floor leader. In 2012, Sato was accused of plagiarizing several passages in a speech opposing the Reproductive Health Bill in the Philippine Senate. Several news agencies reported that Sato had taken the passages from a 2011 blog entry by Sarah Pope, 
Sato asserted that he was quoting Natasha Campbell McBride, who was referenced in the blog post. Pope, upon learning of the controversy, confirmed Sato's plagiarism on August 16, 2012 in another entry to her blog, strongly criticizing Sato for the plagiarism, for denying it and for his stance on contraceptives. 92 She also remarked that she did not intend to sue. Meanwhile, Sato's chief of staff admitted to using the blog post and failing to attribute Pope's work. In 2016, he was again elected as one of the 12 senators of the republic. By then, he was chosen as the majority leader. By the 18th Congress in 2019, he regained his position as the third highest ranking official in the Philippine government after he was re-elected as its Senate president. With the persuasion of their supporters, on March 23, 2021, Sato and fellow Senator Panfilo ping Lixon to form as a tandem for the 2022 national elections. Later in June 7 of the same year, he declared with firm decision that he will run as Ping's tandem. Their platforms include restoring trust in the government and a better lifestyle for Filipinos, with solutions that revolved around addressing corruption. Sato and Laxon plan to initiate an anti-corruption drive, reform the national budget, and digitalize government services. Sato only placed third in the unofficial tally, eventually losing to Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. Meanwhile, his running mate Laxon, on the other hand, also lost his bid for president to Bong Bong Marcos, placing fifth with nearly a million votes. At present, he is currently the Senate President of the Philippines. Following the 2016 elections, he is currently serving his fourth and last term in the Senate, having served two consecutive terms from 1992 to 2004, and is still happily married to beauty queen, actress and singer Helen Gimbo. They have four children including Giancarlo, also in politics as the vice mayor of Quezon City and Ciara, an actress, Lala Soto as the Mr. Sarkibi chairperson, and another daughter, Ramina Soto. With all these achievements, Tito Soto is estimated to have a net worth of 86 million pesos. What are your thoughts on Tito Soto's impact on Philippine politics? Do you think Tito Soto's long tenure in politics has positively or negatively influenced the country? How do you think Tito Soto's career in the entertainment industry has influenced his political career, if at all? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you all for joining us as we delved into the life and career of Tito Soto. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Remember knowledge is power and it's essential to stay informed about the people who shape our world. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and we'll see you in the next video here on Top 10 Society. Take care.